thanks for joining us on Focus on Africa from BBC World News. Multinational food giant Del Monte is locked in a land battle in Kenya over the renewal of its lease for a giant pineapple farm north of Nairobi. Now the fruit ends up in the tin cans and juice cartons around the world. Their lease expires next year and some want the government who own the land to return a quarter of it to local people. Well, the BBC's Ferdinand Omonde reports. At the age of 85, Beatrice Wamboy should be enjoying her sunset years in her rural home. But she spends her days in this poor district of Thicker Town, built on land which does not belong to her, expecting to be evicted any day. She says it's a familiar story, which started many years ago, when as a little girl, she watched colonial settlers drive her family off their property. <laughs> When the white man came, they drove away the locals with their livestock. Since then, we've moved from place to place. All I want is a place to stay and a place that I'll bequeath to my children, even if it's just a space where they can only lay their heads. Just across from this slum are vast areas of private farmland on which they dare not trespass. This fence here represents the big divide that is the land question in Kenya today. On my left are hundreds of people crammed into small spaces on land which they do not even own. On my right, hundreds upon hundreds of acres owned by a few individuals with the right to this property. It's a thorny issue and a big contrast that has been made largely difficult to solve in Kenya today. <laughs> Many landless people who live here say this vast plantation was their ancestral land. The ground is currently leased to Del Monte, a multinational company which processes canned fruit. Under Kenyan law, all leasehold land belongs to the state and is renewable upon expiry. The Del Monte lease expires next year and much of the local community does not want it renewed. How much land Del Monte is talking about? At a public hearing in Fika Town, the National Land Commission listens to public submissions. The majority of the locals want Del Monte to give back some land for housing as part of any renewal deal. They claim the company has about 5,000 acres of land it has never used. Most of their leaders also back a conditional renewal. Yes, you can be renewed. The land that you're occupying, we're utilizing, we're, which is productive, that one can be renewed to Del Monte. But uh, when you have huge tracts of lands which remain idle. I think that doesn't make sense for the company to continue holding on to those lands. We reached out to Del Monte who declined to comment on the matter at the moment. The farm employs about 8,000 local workers on the vast plantation and the company is a major taxpayer for the Kenyan economy. How the government solves this tailment will set a marker for future land cases between the people and multinationals which have invested in the country. Ferdinand Mondi, BBC News, Thika. Well, let's go to Nairobi now and speak to the acting head of Kenya's Land Commission, Abigail Mbagaya. Thanks for taking time to talk to us uh, on the program. Now, the land issue right across Africa is quite complicated. Help us understand, as a commission, what position you take, because... Uh, in the Kenya issue, we have, uh, you know, a company that is a major taxpayer and we have people who genuinely have land concerns. Uh, first of all, what I'd like to say is that the government of Kenya is keen to have investment on land, investment in the country that provides and creates employment for the people of Kenya. So as a country, we are keen to do that. We have provisions to do land banking, even to provide more land to other investors who are willing to come and invest in Kenya to spur development and growth and create employment for the people of Kenya. So then when people come out and say, look, we have uh, vast lands that are not being used and we also need to have a bit of that, what as a land commission, what position do you take, for instance? Uh, for example, in, uh, the National Land Commission is, respects the rule of law. It also respects the sanctity of title. And the sanctity of title in the Republic of Kenya is also respected, and it is guaranteed by the state. So in this case, where people have, have titles to land, we respect that. But again, what the government is doing is that where we find that we can settle people, we do have settlement programs, whereby we specifically cater to settle the landless. 
Well, this, and that is being done throughout the Republic. So in this particular case, we've heard that clip uh, earlier. One of the senators, they are talking about uh, conditional renewal of these leases. And then we've had people saying we also need a piece of land. Is that provided for within the Constitution and the land laws in Kenya? Uh, of course it is provided for. If we look at the current laws, we have a very progressive uh, constitution and we do have new land laws that were developed as a result of the new constitutional framework that we, with, that we adopted as a country from August 20, the year 2010. Now, the Land, the land Act 20, 2012 provides that the immediate previous owner of a lease, when the lease expires, enjoys a preemptive right on the extension of the lease. What does this mean? It means that if you are immediate owner of a lease and your lease expires, you have the first right to refuse the extension of lease. So it is only after you refuse that the lease, the, the same lease can be offered to somebody else to take over. So these demands by the people, these demands by the legislators, are they provided for within the constitution? Are they, le are they legal? Are they doing the, the, uh, something that is legal? Uh, of course, the, the leadership in the country can ask for the citizens to be settled. And like I said, the national government does run settlement programs throughout the republic where the landless and the squatters are normally settled in government programs. So they are valid. They are, their, their demands are valid. But it's also important to make sure that we protect private property. There have been concerns about the secretive nature of uh, how the government handles these land issues. The peop there is an opaqueness uh, when it comes to multinationals and a lot of Kenyans really don't understand how that really has, uh, that happens. How open are you as a commission really? As, as, as a commission, first of all, in the new constitution that we have, the constitution requires that we do a lot of public participation. In all the decisions that we are making, public participation is a requirement. The constitution provides that the national government and the county government working together, all arms of government working together must work in the framework of consultation, cooperation, and cooperation. <laughs> all right, so sir. that is provided for in the law. So we are doing that and we are consulting. Oh, all right, Abigail um, Bagaya, we have to leave it there, but thank you for highlighting those issues for us here on Focus in Africa. Thank you.